Hello. How is everybody today? Anybody hung over? Anybody uh, kind of groggy? You didn't get enough sleep last night? The reason I raise these questions is uh, what, uh, these all raise issues about choice. Did you stay out too late? Did you drink too much? Did you eat too much? <laughs> uh, we all have uh, uh, circumstances in which we've made choices uh, that sometimes we, we regret. Uh, perhaps uh, should have gone uh, to bed earlier so that uh, you're uh, more alert the next day when you have to take a test. Uh, perhaps uh, <clears throat> you should have far gone that uh, a uh, piece of cake or the second piece of cake <laughs> uh, so that uh, you, uh, you don't end up uh, putting on weight. Perhaps you should have gone do your exercises instead of uh, taking a nap in the afternoon and so on. There are choices. And of course, psychologists are interested in choices and uh, choices are often a, determined. The choices we make are determined by the schedule of reinforcement that's in effect for each of the alternatives that uh, we might uh, choose to perform. And uh, uh, psychologists, particularly uh, uh, folks uh, in the uh, Skinnerian tradition have been very much interested in choice behavior, have been studying this using all kinds of complicated schedules of reinforcement, the first of which is shown in the next slide. So this is a diagram of the concurrent schedule of reinforcement in which there are two simple schedules that are available uh, at two simple schedules available at the same time, hence the term concurrent. In this particular example, the pigeon can uh, peck the left key and be reinforced on a variable interval 60 second schedule, or he can peck the right key and be reinforced on a fixed ratio 10. And what's uh, a critical feature of this concurrent schedule is that the pigeon is free to move back and forth uh, between the alternatives. So uh, that's a, a defining feature of concurrent schedules. If you're watching television and you don't like what show is on, you can uh, click on the TV guide and which lists all the channels uh, that are available on your TV and you could pick a different one. And when, if you pick that one and watch it for a while, you don't like it and go back to the guide and pick it uh, yet another one. So you, do, you can always switch from one alternative to the to the next and on your television, there's no particular, uh, <laughs> unfortunately it's also true about watching these video lectures. If you don't like this one, you don't like, you know, Damian's videos, you can go uh, listen to YouTube videos by somebody else. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of a concurrent schedule. You can go back and forth. Uh, <clears throat> what are the rules that govern behavior on a concurrent schedule? <clears throat> well, the next slide shows you um, what we have to take into account if we're going to try to generate a rule, we have to uh, generate or decide on how to measure choice. And in these laboratory experiments, uh, uh, choice is measured in terms of the relative rate of responding on a particular alternative, left or right. <clears throat> and uh, the equation shows you how relative rate of responding can be calculated. Another important variable is the relative rate of reinforcement for a particular behavior and uh, equations for relative rates of reinforcement are shown below. So the little r is to indicate reinforcement and the big R, B, capital B is, is to uh, indicate behavior. And uh, psychologists have uh, studied how relative rates of responding are related to relative rates of reinforcement. And the first uh, uh, major experiment on this, uh, which led to the formulation of the matching law, shown in the next slide. So here, uh, uh, Richard Hernstein, who uh, did this experiment, uh, gave pigeons uh, uh, concurrent schedules of various values, uh, involving both involving variable interval schedules. So on each side, the subject had a variable interval schedule, but the nature of that schedule varied across conditions. And uh, he measured the relative rates of, uh, of responding on the left versus the right, which is shown on the vertical axis, and relative rates of reinforcement earned for responses on the left versus the right, which is shown on the bottom axis. 
And what you see is a straight line at the 45 degree angle, which means that the relative rate of responding is equal to the relative rate of reinforcement. And that's called the matching law. And uh, there's been a lot of work on what determines matching, uh, whether there are deviations from matching, uh, and so on. And uh, there's a, uh, just hundreds of experiments on this sort of thing. It's highly quantitative. I'm not going to uh, have time to review some uh, all of it here or any of it, <laughs> but uh, you'll want to read about it uh, in, uh, in this particular unit. So that's the concurrent schedule. Now, <clears throat> the next slide shows you a different kind of so, uh, choice situation, uh, which is uh, what I call choice with commitment. Uh, and this is uh, 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 the concurrent chain schedule. Now, th uh, it, there are a variety of choice situations that we face in our uh, daily lives where you, uh, once you make a choice, you're kind of stuck with that for a while. Uh, if you um, choose to purchase an automobile, for example, you can go online or whatnot, and uh, there will be <laughs> hundreds of possible vehicles that you could buy that are within your price range. Uh, uh, so there is a choice phase. <laughs> but once you have act selected one of those cars and actually paid for it and it's delivered to your house or you go pick it up, you're kind of stuck with that for a while, right? So uh, that's a situation where the choice is, uh, involves some measure of commitment and uh, that's uh, illustrated here in this concurrent chain schedule where there's a choice link. So the pigeon can go to A or go to B. And if he chooses A, that locks him in to uh, the uh, reinforcement schedule in effect at A until the end of the trial. And if he goes to B, it locks him into uh, this schedule B, which in this example is a fixed interval three-minute schedule. And he's stuck with that until the end of the, uh, end of the trial. Uh, as the concurrent schedule, concurrent chain schedules have also been analyzed using the matching law, and there's a lot of complications uh, involved. But one of the interesting things about concurrent chain schedules is that they're relevant to the study of self-control. So the next slide shows you what's called a, uh, the basic self-control problem. And the self-control problem is typically shows up in what's called the direct choice situation. Uh, so you've uh, finished eating dinner at a restaurant and what happens next? And you, you've had a full meal and you're pretty, uh, you, you've had plenty to eat. You certainly are not hungry. What happens next? Well, and the waiter brings the dessert tray for you to look at. And once you do, tempts you with uh, various dessert options. Now, what's this? Why is this a self control problem? Well, it kind of is. Uh, if you uh, choose to eat the piece of cake, you get the enjoyment of the cake, which may be small potatoes in the long run, uh, If, uh, in contrast to which, if you reject a piece of cake, well, that'll be healthier for you in the long run, but you're not going to enjoy the benefits of uh, uh, turning down lots of desserts <laughs> uh, right away. You're not going to enjoy those benefits until the long run. Uh, you could think about uh, whether you uh, want to take a nap or go exercise. Well, if you take a nap, uh, you're going to enjoy, I love taking naps. <laughs> you're going to enjoy, oh, this feels so good. Uh, as opposed to exercising, which also provide benefits, but those benefits are don't occur right away. They occur if you keep up your exercise re regime and maintain it. Uh, a healthier body weight and so forth. So uh, the larger reward is delayed, whereas the small reward is uh, is uh, available right away. And uh, we uh, have problem with self-control because we usually go with this small uh, immediate reward as as and uh, rather than the larger uh, delayed reward. 
The next slide show, shows you uh, the self-control problem if we set it up in a concurrent chain procedure. In a concurrent chain pr procedure, we put a uh, choice link in there. So now you make a decision ahead of time as to whether you're going to go with the small immediate reward or the delayed larger reward. So this is like um, before you get to the restaurant, you make a decision about whether you're going to order cake for dessert or you're going to order a big dessert or not. Now, if you're worried about your weight or having too much sugar in your diet, it's pretty easy it's, uh, to decide, oh, I'm not going to order dessert. If you make that decision before you enter the restaurant or before you uh, look at the menu or before you order the meal. So if you put a choice link in there, all of a sudden self-control is much more, uh, uh, much more uh, uh, easy to, to make. Um, so uh, uh, why is it that uh, introducing a choice link uh, makes it easier to display self-control? Well, um, the answer to that question is really complicated. <laughs> and there's been a lot of research and it's highly quantitative and we don't have uh, the time uh, to go over it here. But a critical concept in all of, uh, all of the, these studies of self-control is, uh, is the concept of uh, delay discounting. Uh, and the, the concept of uh, delay discounting is that the value of a reward uh, is smaller the longer you have to wait for it. <laughs> One reason uh, we tend to uh, make impulsive choices of the small reward is because we don't have to wait for the outcome. Whereas if you choose the larger uh, delayed reward, we have to wait for it. And that's not worth as much to us. Uh, and the more we have to wait for it, the less it's worth. So the, uh, this isn't from an experiment in which uh, young adults and senior adults were asked to uh, uh, provide judgments about the value of money as a function of uh, the delay that uh, they would experience in actually receiving those funds. And as you can see for young adults, the value of money goes down uh, pretty quickly. So if I ask you, uh, you know, uh, what's the, uh, to judge the value uh, of a uh, $50, if I give it to you right away, it's worth a lot. If I tell you that I'm going to give you $50 two months from now, it, the value has uh, dropped quite a bit. Uh, so that's the concept of delay discounting uh, delay, uh, and self-control is uh, critically tied to uh, the <clears throat> how rapidly you tend to discount fu the future or ignore uh, future outcomes. Uh, it turns out uh, <laughs> psychologists, of course, are very much interested in this problem of self-control. So if I may uh, <clears throat> offer uh, some concluding remarks here, uh, self-control self -control is, is incredibly important. <laughs> it's incredibly important. Uh, why? There has been a lot of research that has measured the degree of self-control that various individuals show. And you can measure self-control in kids uh, as well as at other ages. And uh, people have done longitudinal experiments in which they look to see what are the uh, life outcomes of individuals who have self-control versus those who act more impulsively. And it, uh, the results are really remarkable. Uh, individuals who show self-control uh, tend to have higher levels of education. They tend to have better health. They tend to have more stable marriages, less likely to uh, fall into uh, problems of drug abuse and on and on and on. Uh, so self-control is tremendously important. Uh, self-control is a topic of uh, intense investigation by all sorts of uh, folks uh, in psychology and including in uh, folks that uh, study self-control from the perspective of uh, concurrent chain schedules 
and uh, the phenomenon of delayed discounting. So the next time you think about the choices you're going to make, think about trying to overcome delay discounting. Focus more on how valuable an outcome will be, even if the outcome is not immediately available. The more you're able to focus on the value of things in the future, uh, the better your life is going to be on all kinds of dimensions. So good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> we all fall off the wagon, but there are always new opportunities to get back on. Thanks a lot. See you next time.